decided to change the setup slightly and put this over my right shoulder, my left shoulder uh, because I saw some videos on YouTube and people were saying oh you take it over your left shoulder that's good so I give it a go right um, I'm making this one um, because I promised the people on my Friday course that I would um, we never actually got the demo finished so I'm doing a version of it now so here we go um this is the painting the photo that i'm going to base painting on i'm not going to copy the photograph i never do this is a photograph that i took many years ago at annandale waters there's a service station on the m6 there it's a lovely place to go for your lunch on your way back from scotland so um what's there the main thing says a cloudy sky which I'm going to simplify by blending. I'm going to put in a range of hills at the back, some middle ground, the lake. This isn't really an island but it looks like an island so I'll make it look like an island and some foreground which I'll probably put on that side rather than that side because it will balance the island better. So that's it. The way, when we looked at it in the um, on the workshop, I simplified it into a blob there, a blob there, triangle there, triangle there, and something in the foreground. So I'll put that up there just for occasional reference. Um, I won't look at it very much. And the other thing people wanted me to do was to go through my palette. Now I've actually set out my full palette, which is all the colours I ever use. Um, almost all the colours I ever use. Um, and the order I put them in because people were asking me about that. So it might be of use to somebody or of interest to somebody anyway. If I use my full palette... It consists of two primary, two of each of the primaries, um, some earth colours, white, black or Payne's grey. And if I'm doing landscapes um, or portraits, I'll put a mid green and a purple in just in case to save me time mixing. You can mix all those colors anyway so it doesn't really make any difference right okay so the actual colors um i'm going to do a photograph of this palette as well um so that i can go through it with people more simply in fact i might just do a video grab hold it still i should be able to do a grab from that Right, okay, we've got titanium white, we've got lemon yellow, we've got cadmium yellow, cadmium red, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue and cobalt blue, so that's cool yellow, warm yellow, warm red, cool red, warm blue, cool blue, black. This is terra verte, or I don't speak French. It means earth green in French, so it's a very middle green. And that is cobalt violet, violet, not violent, um, cobalt violet. Sometimes, more often than not actually these days, I use um, a purple, which I can never remember the name of. Um, dioxy something purple which is a very bright purple but this cobalt violet is easier to contain then over here I don't know why I always keep my earth separate I've got yellow ochre sometimes I use raw sienna um, burnt sienna raw umber burnt umber and they're the earth colors that I use mix some superb greens and browns with those colors 
and that's it that's my um that's my palette so without further ado i'm going to get on i'm just going to oh i have here uh, a little tub used to contain very posh makeup but i stole it from my wife um in there i have a mixture of poppy oil and alkyd medium that just helps the blending to dry more quickly um, here i've got a bigger ton tub of poppy oil and not liquid it's alkyd medium they call it um, which helps you to paint thinner and dry quickly um, cup of coffee never without a cup of coffee I've got a range of brushes which range from dirt cheap to reasonably reasonable I tend not to use my very best brushes because I'm tight and I've got a range of synthetic brushes for doing soft fiddling about with in there I won't use all those brushes but I am very very disorganized with brushes a lot of people use their brush very sensibly and then clean it and keep on using the same one me I'll just drop a brush over somewhere and pick up another one um, as soon as it gets dirty I'm lazy right okay we're gonna do about so much sky I know it's halfway but never mind do truddle of stuff there mountains somewhere over there over there over there um, I'm going to move the island slightly so I'll have the trees in the middle here somewhere island underneath this will all move I'll have the other side of the lake there that's just very very roughly so as I know what I'm doing at the front somewhere there's going to be see I put I put that bit over there because it will balance better that way nature is wonderful really but it's um it sometimes doesn't balance well it does it's just that the place I was in oh that's very very sticky use me bigger pot I'm just putting a layer of the oil on there I've obviously kept that one about too long it's gone so sticky it won't work hardly so there we go we've got a layer of oil on the sky now I won't bother with the um With the lake just yet I'll do that separately now I'm trying that brush off a bit because I'll use it to glaze after I'm going to use a fairly big chunky bristly brush and start putting some colors on into the sky white quite a lot of white some ultramarine little touch of alizarin to make some purpley clouds it's a mess isn't it tiny tad of black here and there make some grey well white near the horizon where it's going to be its lightest 
And there we have the first inklings of the sky. Doesn't it look nice and neat and tidy? Right, okay, off we go with the cheapo cheapo nylon brush which I'm just going to use to blend everything together. It's a lovely effect this. Many thanks to Dave Usher for reminding me about this. He uses it a lot these days. Uh, it's something I used to do years ago and then I completely forgot about it and I started fiddling about with skies. But this is a lovely way to get some colours, make a sky interesting and still have it sitting in the background. Okay, now there we go. Put a bit more cloud into it. Use a tad of the black. Some white next to that to blend it. Tad of the alizarin back where it was. A bit more blue in that corner. A bit more blue down here. Oh, doesn't it look like a sky, eh? And then... Trying to get quite a bit of movement into it because this is Cumbria, quite high up, and it's always windy up there. A bit more black, grey that down. Bit of blue into the black. And basically, that will do for now. I might put some more into it, make some more definitive clouds. To put a little bit more white, a tiny touch of yellow to warm up the edge of that cloud. And there we go, that will do for the sky, almost, a bit more blue. And there we have that, bit of sky blowing across the landscape. Now I'm going to start at the back and come forward. Um, the next thing we need to do is the range of hills going right across the back. I'm going to use a smaller bristle brush. This is a brush I've had for donkey's years and it still keeps reasonably well, works reasonably well. Oh, it's just a Crimson and Blake from uh, the works. About 99 pence for a pack of six. So I'm not going to complain. Okay, a little bit of my oil to start mixing. Quite a lot of white because it's a long way away. Touch of blue because that helps it be a long way away. Bits of sky in between us. Um, which it is really, the sky is just particles of stuff 
and all together they relax um, they reflect blue so that's why the sky looks blue so if we mix a bit of blue into things that are far away far away away then that's what kids us painting is all kidology I keep on saying that put a little bit of alizarin into that I've got a purple color which is far too purple um, but put some blue in and then the magic ingredients, a little bit of raw umber and that kills the purple and you have a distant mountain, there you go. So that is white, ultramarine, touch of alizarin, touch of burnt umber and away you go. And here I put in a distant hill, distant fell, I suppose it is, don't know which one, probably if anybody watches this somebody can write in and tell me which fell this is if I'm looking out across Allendale water. Then I'll put another one coming across there. And a little bit more colour to this because I want it to be a little bit closer. We're still using underneath some of the oil from the blending above, so I'm not bothered about the bottom because that will tie itself in. I've got a very, very tiny, tiny weeny weeny bit of yellow ochre on that, which I'm just going to blend into it. give it almost a grassy look but it's blending into that grey to take it a long way away. I'm not going to finish it off because there's going to be a rise of foresty stuff coming across there. Right so wipe, wash that brush. This is um, a bowl of white spirit which some of you may find stinky but I'm very lucky in that I don't have a sense of smell. So here we go right to the next bit a bit more of the yellow ochre touch of cobalt because that's a greeny blue touch more and we've got a very low key green if you can get it without shining which is going to be the next hillside forward which will go across there Now I'm painting this not the way I always paint for those of you who are not on my course um, this is showing ways to start off with blended paint and then build in thicker paint in the foreground so we're starting with the background being blended and then we get to the foreground and it gets thicker and more robust paint but already you can see that you've got distinct layers going backwards not layers of paint but layers of landscape they're, rec they're receding as they go um, so into the same greeny mix I want to pull it a little bit further forward 
So I'll put my warm yellow, the cadmium, into that. Bit at a time, there's one lady on my course who's a lovely lady and she'll remain nameless, but she does love to slap her paint on. And it's not the way to do colour mixing. You start off just adding little bits. There we go, that's quite a bit greener than the other man's grass. There we go. Bring it across there. Touch of the lemon where it cuts across there to increase the change. Not too bothered about up there because I'm putting a big foresty thing on the top of that. The green cheat put some terabirti in there, dash of yellow. The colour I mixed to start with is practically the same as Terra Verde, so. Well, there's that. And all I'm doing is, as I come forward, I'm making the grass yellower. So here, I'm going to use the warmer yellow. What am I on about? The cooler yellow, but it's brighter. The lemon yellow. Which is lighter and I'm going to put some ultramarine with it. And we've got a darker but more vivid green. And see the paint is getting a little bit thicker now. Add some oil to it to spread it out. And this is like a field that goes right the way across. Down to the side of the lake. put something behind there because there'll be holes but remember there's going to be a big clump of trees there but this will be behind them I don't want it too thick because I don't want to pick it up into the trees when I get there I'm just putting a very thin layer of colour at the back there. So if we come through the, if we can see through the trees, we can see something. Putting a little darker ridge there because it appeared. So maybe that is trees or something. bit more of the yellow, brighten that up. Mixing a stronger green, just to bring it forward. Since we've got a line between that and that, and then I'll fade it into the foreground bits there. 
Right, so that's the skeleton of the back bit. And now I'm going to put in the lake. I've got a sort of softy brush here. Again, I'm going to put a layer of oil across where the lake is. I'll use some of my very high quality paint removing film. You probably know it better as toilet roll. But uh, straighten out that line, take some of the green off. Go back in with some more of my oil. Now water is always flat. You all know that. Everybody knows that. Which is why, basically, for water, you paint it that way. When you do reflections, you might, you probably will do it that way because that's the way they're reflecting. But at the moment, we're not putting any reflections in. We're just putting some water. And what the water is doing is reflecting the sky. Now, it's not reflecting that bit of sky because that bit of sky is about five miles away. It's reflecting the bit of sky up there, which is actually my studio ceiling. So I'm going to have to invent it. So. There we go, I'll put the white background and I'll splodge that in, technical term, splodge it in with some oil. Let it go right the way across, cover up the island for now. And into that, I'm going to put some pale blue, which is titanium white and ultramarine blue. I'm also going to use that grey colour that I've already got. And that should make a fairly good skies colour. Now, I've left it fairly thick white over there because there'll be some ripples it's always windy so the association 1967 windy don't start singing heavens you'll make them turn off in groves droves not even groves Here's me talking about people turning off in groves. I'll be lucky if I get five views. Never mind. Sorry about my ugly mug sticking in. I'm getting close to look at it. There we go. Some more of the blue, some of the grey. I've actually put a very tiny touch of the cobalt violet in, in there. See how strong it is. Clean that brush. Some more of the 
bluey colour. And there, we've sort of got some water. This is only basically an underpainting. Oh, I'll bring it a bit further down. Because I'm not sure where I'm going to put this bank. So there, it's all horizontal at the moment. And it's got quite a lot of alkyd medium in there, so it shouldn't stay wet for long. So there, while that's going off a little bit, I'm going to put some interest into the far distance. I'm going to put some trees and stuff in there. Being very good keeping my brushes clean today. Right, a little tiny bristle brush. Come here, little bristle brush. That one will do. Yeah, again, that's a very old one I've had for donkey's years. Starting to go a bit funny at the edge, you can see. It's still in, start to fall apart a bit, but that doesn't matter, that's good for trees. So, a little bit of meat, oily medium. I'll use this darky colour green, but I'll put a lot more of both of these blues because we want blue and green. I want the ultramarine for the distance and I want the cobalt for the green. I'm going to put a tiny bit of the terra verde, terra verde, earth green. I'm going to start using sap green, it's easier to say. It's not very different. Okay, now, my little brush is charged with thick, quite thick paint. And I'm going to put the stand of trees on this hillside. Now they're going into the oil, which is fine. I'm just using the brush to make a woggly spiky line. It doesn't matter that they're going grey, that just makes them look further away. I knew that was going to happen because I knew I'd left that nice and oily still. So I have that little foresty thing going across there. Put some more green into the mix. Clean off the brush a bit. I don't want quite such thick paint. Just underneath it, I'm just going to tidy up that line there. Bit of bluey colour for the shadow at the bottom. Trees, because of their nature, are a bit umbrellary shaped and so they tend to cast shadow underneath their branches. It's pretty obvious when you think about it, but an awful lot of people don't paint the shadow and yet you know it's there 
because when it's a hot summer's day, where do you head? To the shade under the trees, unless you're one of these idiots who covers himself in baby oil and fries in the garden. I used to do that, but I got fed up of turning bright red. I spent most of the summers looking like a tomato. Right, there we go. So there we've got trees going on forevermore over there. There's a much closer band of trees going up there. So I'll put a bit more green in. A little touch of cadmium yellow. Make it a little bit closer. Still using my bashed about brush. And I'm starting just before where that joins. Again, I'm just laying the paint on top of the oily stuff, but not bothering if it picks some up. using the corner of the brush now to lay on thicker print paint as it comes closer. I am not painting thousands of trees and billions of pine needles. I'm just painting a bit of texture into this smooth stuff. So that when you look at it from a distance, because you've seen so many landscapes like this, you think, oh, that's trees going over the top. You don't think, what's that bluey, greeny paint? You think it's trees. You might think, oh, I could do better than that, but at least you know what I'm trying to do. Right, there we go. More trees going off the edge there. Of shadow. I'm putting very tiny amounts of black into this now just to give it a bit more oomph. If you've not done loads and loads of painting be very careful with black. It's very effective but it takes time to learn how to control it. So I don't like that bit there I'm going to put some more trees straggling about inside there bushes whatever just so it's not quite so open see bushes
They're blobs, really, but you might think they're bushes if you look hard enough. Right, now I'm going to swap my little blunky brush for a little pointy brush. I use a little soft diddy brush. Don't often use soft diddy brushes. Ooh. Oh, that one's tiny, that'll do. Right, what I'm going to do with this little tiny weenie brush is I'm going to put some hedgerow-y things further down. So I'm going to mix up a nice liquidy, oily, dark greeny, blacky colour. And then I'm going to put a little hedgerow going across there. By doing this sort of thing, you can make people think that the land's going up and down. I'll do the same sort of thing here. I haven't put any there because I'm going to put a little belt of trees along there. They're not there in the picture because that's all flat coming down, but I think I like that bit. So apologies to those of you who live near Annandale Water who say that's not right. But there we go. More dark colour, add a little bit of purple to this green to liven it up. And then, remember I'm going to put the big trees over there, so I'll just do some... Nothing fancy, I'm just using the side of the brush laying it on top of the oily paint so it doesn't pick too much up. Gentle. What's the song? Nice and easy does it every time. Bring some of these down. Because along the bank, I'm going to make some willowy, aldery things which are greener. So I'm putting some more yellow into the mix. And we just do some bigger blobs here. dark underneath
There. Now, I'm going to use a half inch flat brush. I'm going to mix up some yellow ochre, some burnt sienna, which should make a nice sandy colour. First things first, move that bit. Don't want a big lump of paint. Right, okay, all along where the trees are growing down to the edge, I'm just going to tap in a little tiny line of beach. I'm not really worried about getting little bits of blue into it, bits of green into it rather. It just gives a little demarcation between the, the trees and the water. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of that blue, that greeny blue and just going to drag it down. touch of brown in it and there we've got some little reflections And where's my little teeny tiny brush? What I'm going to do with my little teeny tiny brush is I'm going to get some white and this is something which works in pictures but doesn't necessarily ever happen in real life and that is just the edge. not enough paint on my little brush it needs to be sticking out the end this is just straight white straight out the tube I don't know why, I don't think I've ever actually seen it in real life, but if you put it in pictures people tend to think, oh yes there's a little line between the sea or between the lake. There. There's my middle sized brush, put some more of that dark on it and make some more of those reflections. Sorry about that noise, it's my hearing aid, I don't know if it's been picked up.
There. Doop doo 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 be Right, I'll do some more on the lake afterwards. But now I'm gonna do the island. Now, this is where the kidology comes in again, because that's grass, and that's grass, but they're different colours, that's probably grass, but it's grey. Now, because I faded the colours out a little bit, they seem as if they're going further away. So what I need to do is the grass on the island, if we were standing on it, is the same colour as the grass over there. And the grass on the bank is the same colour again. But what we're going to have to do so that that looks as if it's coming forward is we're going to have to mix a much brighter green which still doesn't look silly so and we'll start off I've got this yellow ochre color I've got here and I'll mix some more of that into it some of the lemon yellow to give it a nice green base some of the cadmium as well to make it a stronger greeny base and I've got that quite thick, you can see there, there, quite thick. Now I'm going to add some of the cobalt blue to that, which is already a greeny sort of blue. And there I've got a sort of mid-green to start with, a little bit more blue. Now, middle-sized bristle brush. And this is going to get a little bit tricky because that's... Oh no, it's fairly dry now. So where am I going to put my lake, my island? I'll put it about here. I'm just laying these greens. On top of that. Oh, it's a good job it's so warm in here tonight because that is nice and dry already which doesn't often happen with oil paints there some of the same colour which is fading into that so I need some more darks use some blues and that's just thick paint going for the tree canopy doesn't matter that they're going a bit bluey because they're, they're pine trees 
and they've got bluey sort of odd bits sticking out the top Taking that a bit too long, but it doesn't matter. Now, I use some of the purple, a little bit of black to kill it. Some of the yellow. And put some shadow. Now, what's tricky about this is you don't want to pick up too much of the paint underneath so I'm just being very careful using fairly thick paint and laying it on top of the greeny blue to give it some underneath now this is where the paint's quite thick In fact, paint's very thick. But I'm still using a brush. I'm not using a palette knife for it. Now, using some of the black, some of the purple, just to get a really dark colour. What I'm doing is I'm using this brush, bashing the end of it. And then I'm going to stipple into that. Just to break up the edges and the lower bits, these lumpy bits. I'm also going to put some really dark bushes down here in the undergrowth and some shadow underneath all those trees, stand bushes at the end. Make them into gorse bushes. Clean off the brush, some of the cadmium, bash into the cadmium, there, put some light into the top there by stippling. looks if we're looking through We've still got some of this color left from behind so I'll bash some of that in in places so it looks like we're seeing through now I'm going to use if I can find it a really good brush This is one of my favourite brushes. I've got several of them. They're not particularly expensive. 
Uh, they're very, very good. The SAA imitation sable and they work like imitation sable. They're brilliant. So, and they're cheap. What I'm doing now is I'm mixing up a lighty colour for these trunks. And this is a rigger, so it'll paint very fine lines if I want it to. But also fairly thick lines. If I press harder. my baldy head out in the way. Notice here I've stuck some that's actually fingerprints where I've got my when I'm doing things that need close attention I rest my little finger so that I can get the brush clean I've been doing it down there and I've got all little finger marks on it because I hadn't checked that my finger was clean but it doesn't matter because I'll put reflections down there anyway little bit more really dark ones mix some black into all that darky color The good thing about rig, or one good thing about riggers, is you can use the side and pull things up and now you've got sort of very easy Right, that's not bad Clean up the rigger. Some more of the beachy colour. Put some along there. Now, where's that? 
There it is. No, I won't use that one. I'll use the see-through one. There. Now, some of the dark. A little straight line there. Mix the greens, pull down some reflections. bit more dark some of this burnt umber doesn't get much darker than burnt umber and yet it's a lovely warm color brilliant for those you know that sort of muddy brown color you get at the end of edge of rivers and lakes Shows the waters fairly clear. Now, pull that down. Just give a hint of the trees, the trunks, that they're wobbly because they're in the water. You have to excuse my head because I'm uh, going close in. It's a good idea to check where your trees are before you put reflections in. There. Right. Clean off the jolly old hands. Get this flat brush again. Some whitey colour. Put in a little white line. Put some little white lines going across the lake. What I'm going to do actually is I'm going to use a fairly stiff bristly brush. I use this one. I like that. 
called an Egbert. It's like a filbert, but it's very long. I'm going to use it very dry. Bash some light into it. Bashing the edges out so it all separates. And then... Put some little flickers of wind on the water, drag some white gently. Right across my reflections. I don't want too much on the water. Looks wet. Now, for the front bit, I need it to look really close. So, I'm going to use that one. Not that one. Hmm. Nope. I was going to use a palette knife, but I can't find one, so I'll use I'll use that one. You may notice, may not notice. Oh, that one will do. This one. My granddaughter got hold of it. Can you see it's got glitter all over it? I had that for donkey's years. Now it's coated in glitter. And did I tell her off? No. So anyway, I found a palette knife. What I'm going to do is very quickly put some stuff in this corner. I'm going to use the cadmium because that's a very warm yellow. Mixing it into the greens we've already got. And then I'm just going to put a scrunch in this corner. I think that's a technical term, scrunge. You know what it is anyway, don't you? You can tell. It's just something to go into this corner, which isn't a field the same as the others. And I'm really, I'm just scraping off the colours that are on my palette. As long as they're strong and there's plenty of contrast, it will work. made green mix it into a really dark color for this here Thank you. 
Now it looks a bit naff that. Well, I don't know. It actually looks like as if there's a steep bank going down to the lake, which there isn't. But on the other hand, it's only a very quick picture. So it doesn't really matter whether it's right or not. And the main point is to demonstrate using blending techniques and then building up into thicker paint to show depth and contrast. So that's what I'm doing. That, what I'm doing now is fiddling, which I shouldn't, but I'm just putting some more darks in these bits here. There we go, that'll do. Sort of Annandale waters, but not quite. I'll turn it round towards the camera so she can get a proper look of it. There you go, that's pretty nearly straight on. And what we've got in that is a blended sky, looking a bit windy, blended background over there. This is all fairly thin paint and then I put stronger paint on the, um, on the trees to make it look as if they're a bit three dimensional. Down here, where's that? brush that's a bit naff get some dark into that spread out those whites it's funny things you don't see till after you've finished right there we go we've got stippling and stuff on this island which i've shoved in the middle of the lake and then this bit I've just put in a piece of foreground in my usual scribbly style because I like it better with something in. It's a bit out of proportion it looks better without that because the lake the, the thing is much further away. Um, if I was going to put this on the market and sell it or something, I'd probably take that out, which you can do, and then just put a little gentle bank up here, because it makes those trees look a bit wrong. Anyway, that'll do for now. It's not fantastic, but it's something done. And it's what I told my ladies that I would do. So it's done. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope you've got something from it. And I'll see you next time. Right. I, um couldn't live with it any longer I had a few a little bit of a look at it and I just did not like the foreground all over here so what I did I used this palette knife to scrape it off and then I just used some white and bits of blue and just and some of the um, oil and I just blend it across the foreground. I think it looks far better with no foreground at all, apart from the ripples that I put in. I also tidied up the island, the um, reflections under there and underneath the island, and added a few dark bits over there as well. But I just, um, 
I couldn't live with it, so I had to do something extra. Okay, there we go. That's the end of it for certain sure this time.